Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Okay, so Nikki, thanks a million um, for agreeing to do this. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Uh, I've one of the you're one of the first people that I wanted to talk outside of the whole golf realm because obviously I've known you for many years through. Uh, your brother Barry is an inspiration to all of us. Um, and, uh, Such a professional golfer, maybe so, he'd be next on your list. Yeah, yeah, I think Barry's going to be the next one. Of, but um, I'd say his psyche is really interesting. If you, if you can crack that code, Donald. Barry's <laughs> principles and values um, are something that everybody needs to uh, needs to learn from. So, uh, so, but obviously because of that, I was aware of like, and I've obviously followed your journey through sport, and it's a really fascinating one to me because you've got it's not just like one facet like hockey you've, it's been multifaceted where you've like had your time playing at Dublin and then you've like done your motor racing piece so you've been exposed to a lot of like high performing teams and units and all that kind of thing so I'm sure um I'm sure through some like under as I, like as I was saying to you off camera like, like you know in terms of the Warriors code it's all about finding like what the underlying values and principles and stuff are of high, high level performance and um, so I'm, yeah. I'm really keen to kind of see what you've picked up along the way so first piece I want to chat to you about is um obviously the 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 life you've chosen and it's like been a like a fairly long time now you've been doing all this kind of stuff um is a tough one where um and especially in your sport there's not a huge amount of money in it um the motorsport maybe just a bit more but like certainly in the hockey there's not a huge amount of money in it and um What's been the kind of key ethos or, or, or piece that's kind of kept you going all this time to to the point now where hopefully in 2021 you'll get to make a, a, a trip to the Olympics? So what's been key? I think that's a, I think it's a really good question because I think I'm a player that, like you said, I've been doing it a long time now. This is my 11th year in, in the national programme. So, but I've, I'm one of the players maybe of five or six who have actually been through many different phases of the programme. And so, yeah, there's not a lot of money in our sport, but we've transitioned from a very, very much a part-time team to now this kind of semi-professional team. And so the journey has been not just in terms of the success, but in terms of the growth of the sport and, mm. and you know, changing sort of where the sport was 10 years ago to where it is now. Yeah. Um, what, what do I think kind of kept me going? I think that when, we, when I started out playing, obviously, you know, I remember going to talk to the coach. The first thing he said to me was, um, you know, I think this team can play in an Olympic. And it was the first time I'd heard the Olympics and my name kind of go together or, you know, something to do with me, go go with an Olympics. And I just kind of didn't, I don't remember whatever else he said in that um, meeting. It was just the Olympics. I was like, oh, I could go to an Olympics. Yeah. I didn't even know hockey was an Olympic sport at the time because I didn't grow up in, known much about hockey I just played it in school I didn't follow it or anything like that so that was kind of the start and then I suppose when I started playing you know it wasn't as easy as just going oh I'm going to play for this team and I'm going to go for the Olympics because it certainly doesn't work like that um, and I figured that out fairly quickly when I think I probably my first 10 games we lost completely in a row and I was kind of going all right like do you think I to go to the Olympics if you keep losing or <laughs> this is rough yeah yeah it's a bit rough um but I think though you know, you, the reason that it keeps it going is that you, it's the progress that you make and you make it as an individual and you make it as a team. And I think the Irish hockey team is an unbelievable um, story to, that highlights, you know, kind of going from absolutely nothing and then just gradually building and building and building. And it was never about the money and it was never about being professional athletes. It was always just about, we knew we, we could achieve this. The Olympics is definitely something that we can achieve. And so you just take you take it in stages and you take it in steps. I mean, I remember that the turning point is probably 2014 when we went to a tournament. Um, it was the champions trophy or the, not the champions trophy. It was champions challenge. So it's like for teams ranked say eight to 15 in the world or something like that mm -hmm. or 16. And we were ranked 15. So it was exactly like the world cup only four years previous. It was a lower competition, but we were still the second lowest ranked team going in. And we finished second. So, oh, right, yeah. you know, this is this is something. When we got to the World Cup final, it wasn't the first time we'd done something like this. Yeah. That was a huge, a huge step up 
in terms of Irish hockey. And when you can ach- when you achieve something like that, and you go from oh we're always losing, and you start to see the development and all the hard work that's put in from a tactical point of view, a fitness point of view, a mental point of view, everything, you know that that moment definitely you, you, it builds your confidence, and you just you, all you're doing is adding to it, and you're adding, 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 and it's like chains on a link or a link yeah. on a chain. You're just adding to them all the time, um, and I think that that's what's always been a motivating factor for me and for the team you know some of those there's probably I'd say seven or eight of us that have been there um kind of since this whole journey began um so yeah I think that you know every little progress you make takes you on to the next step if you're not making progress and but I don't think you can make progress unless you're genuinely like trying to improve in in all the different areas that it takes to make that progress so the Um, first like the first piece would have been it was almost like, because I, I think definitely in sports hard when you're on that like losing side. If you haven't got, if he had, maybe if he hadn't mentioned the Olympics in that first meeting, you might not have had enough of a vision to sustain you through that first night. Like you're like, yeah, exactly. Stuff. But like, fuck it. Like we could be at an Olympics here in not, yeah. in not too long. Um, and then I think the other piece of problem with that, you know, if we bring it back a little bit before that is like, have you, you, from what I understand, certainly through like all through school and stuff, you've always been like really competitive in sports and always been like pushing yourself to like compete at high levels. And I know like obviously your uncle Derek was an amazing like motorsport driver and your dad was a great driver. Like, has it, you know, how much of the influence and I've been up at your house and all the memorabilia of like Vivians and stuff lying all around the house? And I can imagine growing up in that and you're seeing that stuff. It could work one or two ways. It could work where it can almost cast a bit of a shadow over everything that you do, where you're like, am I ever going to live up to this? Or it can inspire you to believe, well, you know, my dad did this and my uncle did this and if they can do it, I can do it. So how did how did that play out with you early on? Yeah, I think I, I definitely was the, the latter of what you said there in terms of complete inspiration for me. And, you know, I've always said that my dad's my hero um, and I've just, like been obsessed with what he did you know even when he was still alive I would just loved following him to the races and you know watched him race every weekend and um, I just thought he was cool and his job was pretty cool and um, I think though like obviously I never went down the motorsport route um, and but it didn't really matter what I was going to do I think the fact of what he achieved and kind of the way he did it no matter what I was going to put my hand to, if it was sport or if it was in my professional career or whatever, it was all to try and be the best that I could be because mm. that's, that's all I knew. That's all that kind of came before me. Um, so yeah, I think I'm lucky that I did see it as more of an inspiration rather than, you know, a bit of a shadow. But. And when you talk about, cause like when you talk about the way you went about, like what, what was the biggest lessons you learned from that? Like, can you like share any of the things that you learned from your I think like, you obviously as, as at the time I didn't really realize like the kind of driver, the kind of athlete he was at the time. Now he was a professional athlete or anything like that, but he was definitely professional. He was his meticulous in his preparation. Um, in terms of setting up his car, like he wouldn't let anyone near it. He knew it best. Everything he, you know, he did everything himself because that's how he prepared, knowing that he knew exactly, you know, how much he tightened one nut on one bolt yeah, on the yeah. car. He knew exactly. Um, how this car was going to be set up because he did it himself and that's how he prepared himself so he was like he was he was quite reserved at the racetrack and kept to himself like he, I think he was just so competitive inside that it was his way of mentally preparing as well it was never a showboating kind mm-hmm. of thing he never had a big personality character that was like oh here I am I'm, I'm big I'm going to yeah. win this race it was very much all kept quite insular and actually I think I'm probably quite similar in those ways as well mm-hmm. um you know I think it's a quiet confidence more than anything where yeah. like for like so if I'm getting that right like his thing was he took great pride in the what led to the race and then to his almost like um like an inner satisfaction knowing that I don't need to boast because I know I've I know my car is the best because I, I put the work into it. So I'm going to just let you all see that now as opposed to. Yeah, it was kind of like more, you know, he did all the hard work behind closed doors and he didn't show it off. And so then, and then be, because of how he 
tired himself, like mentally. And he, I even remember him like constantly going, running up and down. Like he did keep fit as well, like at the time. Um, but that was that was just the way he was. Mm. You know, he he knew how good he was, um, but he knew he had to kind of work at it as well and and continue to prepare and try and even learn, like always learning how can I get an extra tenth? How can I improve the race car just a tiny little bit more? So he was. Yeah, he was just so competitive. Um, but looking back now, I guess I start to understand more of his character and, and maybe how he, you know, approached himself towards it. You can make the, like, it's when you have, like, a little bit more experiences yourself, you're able to, like, connect the dots a little bit more. All oh, right, fuck, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, that yeah, yeah exactly. So I do, I, like, I mean, you know, recently I found a lot of old videos, VHS tapes of all his races. No way. Um, and a friend of mine has put a lot of them online on YouTube or stuff. A lot of them have interviews and, and I'm, but I'm watching his racing, like with the experience that I know now, whereas when I was younger, I was just watching, and, you know, if he won, he won, but now I can appreciate how he approached the races, how, you know, mm -hmm. you can understand what's going in his head just by watching him drive and you get a better understanding of who he was. And I think that that's, you know, nice that I'm still learning about him, even though he's not here, you know, through these kind oh, of big time, tapes yeah. and stuff. So. And when you look at like your own performances over the years and the stuff like you know you've managed to achieve like in like big moments in hockey and all, I think like motorsport is one of those unbelievable ones where it's almost so dangerous you can't afford not to be present. Like you know what I mean? If you think <laughs> you know what I mean? If you if you That's, think too yeah. too far down the track, you're gonna end up on the fucking gravel or in the wall, even worse. Um, have you been able to bring that into like? Have you been able to bring that into your performances with the Irish team? Like, you know, say, for example, on the World Cup run and stuff, and you're doing these historic things, how do you find that a challenge, the ability to, like, you know, focus on the moment in front of you, or is it something you've developed over the years? Definitely something I've developed, and I'm actually somebody who, and I've, I've kind of spoken about this before, would have lacked a lot of confidence, both as a player and um, a person, like, when I first started out. And a lot of people kind of look, like, will say to me, oh, I I would never have thought that by how you play or whatever. And it was actually my uncle Derek who has done a lot of research into obviously motorsport is his, his platform and how the teams and the people operate um, within motorsport. But he's become a kind of a professional speaker now at trying to understand how different people work and how to get the best out of themselves and reach their potential. So he actually helped me massively with the mental side of it because like when I first started out, we didn't have psychologists and we didn't have, and you didn't really understand like the mental side of the game is, wasn't as spoken about as much as it, as it is now. And, you know, it is the most important part of the game is the mental side, because if you can't tell yourself that you can do something, you just won't do it. Like your body will only, and your, you know, only do what your, what your mind can tell you to do. Mm. So I didn't really fully appreciate that until I started to work with Derek on it. Um, and it, it was just amazing to see how much I could learn and grow and actually develop the mental side of my game. And once I started to develop that, everything just started to fall into place. And I always bring it back to, I scored a goal in the Olympic qualifier for Rio, the one that we missed out in sudden death penalties. But I scored a, an unbelievable goal that I don't even remember, I don't even know how it happened, but it was one of those, it was that situation of staying focused and staying present that consciously actually I, I, I didn't even realize what I was doing. I was just so focused on get the ball and everything kind of slowed down in my mind. And it was like, you were in that kind of the zone, I suppose as they call it. Yeah. Um, and when I scored, I was like, wow, finally I've proved I can play on the world stage, you know? And for me, it was a real, that was what was holding me back all the time was my own kind of self doubt and self sabotaging my own kind of hockey. That you, led to me having to eventually kind of do something about it. Have you got like a couple or like two, like I suppose key couple of key points that you know you and Derek worked on in terms of like your mental piece, what like that you could share in terms of how you how it developed? Yeah, so the, the biggest one I suppose is visualization. <clears throat> so you know of it, and, and most athletes will know of it. And I, visualization is like really important. I didn't understand it, and I think when you do suffer with maybe a lack of confidence in sport or even as a person, you tend to always focus on the negatives. And so I'll replay every ball I turned over or every shot I miss hit or, 
you know, an elimination that didn't go well and you're just playing these in a loop. And, but actually if you can flip that and, and, you know, just fill it with the good stuff. So visualize when I made a great elimination and practice those. And I kind of got to a point where I was practicing what I was seeing in my head all the time that eventually it just became second nature. I didn't even have to think about it anymore. So visualization is definitely a huge one for me. And I think it's something that you don't just, you don't just, you know, you're, you, ha- you always have to train your mind. So it's not like, oh, I'm trained. I'm now mental, uh, mentally capable. <laughs> you know, so you, you're always doing it. And there's times where you start to feel that kind of self-doubt creeping back in again. You start to see the negative. But, but because you know how to train it, you can kind of... Got awareness. Yeah, exactly. That every like every time you go out to play something's going to be thrown at you maybe that you've seen before or that you're a little bit disappointed in and you just kind of go back to what you know works well for you and for me like vis- visualization was definitely one of the, the biggest learning learnings that i had was that was that process like was that <clears throat> was that you like sitting at home like like thinking through like the positive outcomes would you write them down was it done like at the pitch was it like where did the it kind of was was everywhere I mean I suppose yeah it, it started with kind of writing them down so and a few like self affirmations of, of things that I know I'm good at so it's being able to kind of um say to yourself this is my strength and and like be you know um what's the word like praise yourself for what you are actually good at rather than always kind of going, Oh, I did this and I did that and focusing on the negative. So yeah, it started kind of taking it down and then it was, it started with like, okay, three, uh, visualization, say skills that I want to come away with from training. So maybe it's an elimination off the right foot. Like that's just a technical term for hockey. It could be anything, but, or it's, um, you know, three shots, three on target or something like that and do three get three done on target and yeah but it's not just doing them it's remembering like the approach in your foot in your footsteps like how you approach the ball like where was your weight where and this is all relevant in in golf as well if you can if you can visualize all of the things that lead up to that skill happening then you just go through your head okay uh way forward head over the ball everything make sure that that's always happening every time you try and hit the ball rather than that, just going i just hope this one goes i hope this one goes in i hope this one goes in and if you get three in a row go okay well that's it i've done it that's so interesting because like when most people talk about visualization we talk of it as in like a a pre a pre task yes. skill so for example yeah. it'd be like okay sit down and visualize how you want this next event to go or this next match or this next round but i think that's re- I, I i never thought of it so much in that context but it's actually a post-event skill where like in training actually taking the time to go because we hit so many shots or we do so many things in training we almost just like make, like fuck it that was gonna move on but we don't actually take like the at the end of training like whether it's in a journal or just sitting down driving the car like really picturing yeah that goal is unbelievable i thought my way go here i felt the connection on the hockey stick like this i saw the ball fly into the top corner so you can like almost like strengthen the neural pathways that created that event as i think it has i think it's what what's good about it is well for me as well like i think i always had a tendency to kind of skip step one step two and go straight to step three so by kind of going through the motions or going through the steps knowing that you have to because that's how you visualize it and you're you're seeing it you're saying it it stops you from kind of you know like when someone goes oh well you, you didn't even swing properly you just wanted to hit the ball instead of actually going through or get my swing and, and go through all the steps before I actually hit the ball. And so that kind of helped me as well, because I was always like, oh my God, like, you know, hurry up, get it all out. Yeah. Like not actually approach the skill in it, sort of. Holistic you know. sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's, and going back to one of the other things you said, I thought it was really interesting. And I had this with a player recently where, um, also like a real like you're talking like top at her like she's top 100 in the world um on the, the world amateur rankings and stuff and we had a good chat at a training camp recently where it was like um she almost it was like she she believed that the self-doubt and self-criticism and stuff was what made her good it was like okay you know like by 
oh, that I work harder than anybody else and it's that self doubt that drives me on. Yeah. And then what we realized was was like we flipped it and we're like, okay, well, imagine you're the best player in the world. You've got like you're like you don't. Would you work? Would you would you would you stop working? And she was like, oh, if I was the best, I'd work harder again. I was like, okay, so it's almost I think like though, some, you, I think you have to though to a certain extent. Like it's 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 not even whether you're the best in the world, but I think when you when you feel like you've you've done something that you know that you feel like right, that's me at my best then no I don't think any athletes can kind of just sit there and go that's me you know? <laughs> yeah that's me at my best <laughs> and I'll go out tomorrow and I'll be my best but you then go all right well wh- where can I go from here and it's always finding that little well, can I can I do this a little bit better do and this like, a little bit better and if I put this bit a bit better and this bit a bit better now the, the whole of me is that bit better I'm being so, able I'm being able to accept like, you know, one of the things that she struggled with was like I might praise her for something and be like, you know what, that was a really good shot, like it was a really good finish. You did that, you played those three holes exactly as I would like, you know, we we talked about. And she would struggle to take the oh shit, really, like I could hit it yeah. and it wasn't that good. Yeah, I know like, what that's like. like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why fucking why, why are you saying that? To me, like that's ridiculous. You know, and it was it was only like it was because she was so scared she uh again through conversations like this she was so scared that if she believed in herself it would take away that like um that 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 piece of her that drove her forward um and we turned the corner she's done really well since and she's been like she's really like kicked on um but it's 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 it can it's a it's a piece that a lot of um we don't talk about a lot in sport is like a lot of unbelievably high performers like yourself like future olympians and people are unbelievable like is they're so driven to get better that it's almost as if you can't accept the quality of your work in the yeah. moment. It's almost as if you could only get like after you look back and you go, fuck me, actually, do you know what? You're sitting having a gin and tonic on a beach. Someone goes, oh, I, was pretty, <laughs> I was pretty good actually yeah. back then, you know? So have you got better? Like, I suppose that that's where I'm going to be going with this. It's like, as you approach these next few years and, you know, you obviously you're still in the moment, like, are you, are you able to appreciate like, you know, the quality that you've achieved, but still drive that piece on to get better and better. How does that work for you? I think that, you know, that's certainly the way I was for like, say the prime of my career, maybe. Um, and like, I think that like, I, 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 you know, I'm not getting any older or sorry, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> I'm not getting any younger. Um, <laughs> thinking, could you, could you, that's a secret that I want to know. Let me know I'm just trying to like praise this like in, in the right way, because obviously like I look at myself in the, the stage I'm at in my career and, and think, okay, to get better or to be better doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a new skill or it has to be, uh, I have to be faster or I have to be, like, you know, do things that I never did before. For me at the stage that I'm in, I think what makes me that little bit better each day is the consistency. So like, I might have a good day today and then I might have a bad day tomorrow and I might have a good day. And when I'm good, I'm really, really good and at my best or whatever. But I think I would feel like at the stage I'm in, if I was to, to be able to put out that consistently, consistent best performance all the time, and not try and actually go, oh, well, maybe, why don't I work on trying to be faster? Well, no, you're 32 years of age. You're probably not going to be faster. Like, really, you know, in mm-hmm. the short time frame that we had, say, if the Olympics is going to be this year, that wouldn't have been a focus for me because I'd rather play to a, the high level that I know I can play at, but play it consistently and to, to push it, put out performances that are consistent that I know can have an impact in, in the squad and, and in the team um, and so I think definitely that would, would have been my mindset of going and, and getting better and oh I want to learn this skill and I want to do that in the earlier years of my career definitely yeah mm. um, but I think that now I'm probably sort of coming towards the end of my career and while I don't want to kind of start going like this <laughs> I want to like stay up there and keep it up there as, yeah. as much as I can so I think so consistency is a big part of that it's so interesting you say that because I think like that's again a piece that most people <clears throat> like in sport and all we 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 think we keep looking to accumulate new skills instead of like like almost maximizing the ones that we already have yeah. is being like 
I remember, um, I don't think I've spoken this before, but uh, one of the one of the, one of the players I work with, uh, somebody asked her, you know, like, what's your goal or whatever? I want to be the best player in the world. And he caddies, this guy was caddying for the one of one at the time, and he said, okay, well, like, you know, what makes you special? And don't tell me you work hard because everybody works hard. And she was really, like, like really stuck. And she was like, mm. I remember talking, she was like, like, call me. She's like, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I've mm. actually no idea. And we flipped it around and we spoke about, well, I think like this, Pete, you, you could be the best in the world at this and possibly this and this. And we were able to pick out maybe like two or three things that she had to, you know, that she was already good at that she could be unbelievable at. And I think like that's kind of, it's easy. Like say, for example, if, if you're not the fastest, the time lag between you starting here and getting to being fast is too is sometimes too long and not worth the time. Exactly, passes. yeah. Whereas if you're an unbelievable passer and your strategic mind is really good and you're already good at it, you can maximize that real quickly and have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I agree, and I think that you know, you you always like. I know I'm always like, is there something that I can't do? Because you know, as <laughs> when I when I started playing hockey, it was all about right. I want to want to learn something else. There were so many skills involved, and I just wanted to to be the best at all of them. Um, and now it's more like okay. I, I know I have enough skills. I can play the game. I've played at a high level for a long time. Now can I use what I have and use it better than I've ever used it before? Yeah. Rather than going, look at this, I can do this skill and I can do that skill and I can do this skill. Because really at the end of the day, that's not really going to get you anywhere unless you can put it to use and make it you know, worth something on the pitch. Um, so yeah, I think for me anyway, over the next year, or whatever I have left in my, in my career to to really just kind of focus on, like you said, those skills that I know I'm 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 good at and have developed for the last ten years, and just try and bang out consistent performances. You know, every time I step on the pitch. And then I suppose like a couple of last little pieces I'd like to kind of run through with you would be one would be like one of the common uh, the the common allies I've seen in all the the people who you know done great things in sport there's like an, there has to be an element of competitiveness there like we have to have we know we know how much the process is important but at the end of the day we can't hide from the fact that there is a scoreboard up on the wall up there and stuff like that and how do you deal with um i suppose both like the, the losses and then how do you deal with the wins and i think it's as important to deal with both of them in a solid way so I'd just be interested how you how you deal with both ends of the spectrum yeah, like again, it's a really good one. And I think that the journey that we've been on um, like highlights perfectly exactly what and many athletes will go through. Um, you know, we had that that big win I was telling you about in 2014 where we second lowest ranked in the tournament and then we, we ended up finishing second. So we won a silver medal at that tournament. And like the highs of, at that time were just like, this is amazing. Like we didn't really think that we were an amazing team. We just thought that it was amazing to get there. And we probably didn't actually really appreciate just how good we had become or like how much progress we had made. And um, so like in terms of a whole competition high, how, how did we deal with it? I mean, I think honestly, we, it, it got us so excited and, and like that we spoke about the motivation to, to drive on and go forward. That's exactly what it did. But it was, I think, Olympic athletes always work in four-year cycles, so it was it was never the end goal. And the World Cup was never the end goal when we won a silver medal in it. There's always been, the Olympics has always been where we wanted to be. So everything that, every high that we took along the way, yeah, it was a great stepping stone. But our, like even after the World Cup, we, we said, okay, we're going to enjoy, we're going to enjoy the high. We enjoyed it. We went on few tours around Ireland everyone wanted us here there and everywhere we did it all we soaked it all in and then it got to a point where you know two three months after it people were still ringing for interviews how was the world cup how is this and you're you kind of feel yourself all we're doing is talking about the world cup and as a squad we just kind of came together and we're like this is it we're putting it to bed we're not talking about the world cup we're not talking to news reporters there we're not talking to you know um journalists anything we're not talking about it anymore that's it the World Cup has been and gone and we move on and we start again from scratch. We have to think about where we were before we actually got to the World Cup. And it was it was the best thing that we ever did because we could have went on for months and or a year just kind of having the same conversations and just kind of being stuck in that moment of the World Cup and not really actually using 
the, the, the time to, to progress from the World Cup. Yeah. Um, the, the lows, I think the biggest low that we had um, was when we didn't qualify for Rio. And I think at the time, the team at the time was the best we, we thought it might ever be. Um, and it was so difficult because we ended up playing China, who were ranked fifth in the world at, at the time. We were 15th. We should have beaten them in full time, went to extra time, went to, sudden, went to penalties, sudden death penalties, and we lost. And it was just devastating because we really showed up in that tournament and we were, we'd beaten teams ranked ahead of us all the way along. Like we didn't have one poor performance in that tournament and it was really, really hard to deal with. Like I know I ended up taking nearly a year out from hockey. I went off to the States and I started oh, yeah. motorsport engineering and I worked for a team over there for six months. And I just was like, I don't know if I can go back to hockey again because you know, we didn't do it. Mm. So will we ever do it? But I think that at that stage, it was like what I learned anyway through it was that you've, you've failed. You've had the biggest, fa- there's nothing to be afraid of anymore because you've done it. You've, you've had the worst failure you can possibly have. You don't need to fear it anymore. And so it didn't matter. Like when you went out, it was like nothing can ever be as bad as what we've just done. So interesting, yeah. So for me, it was like, I'm not afraid anymore to, to lose a game or anything like that. In fact, I'm actually ready to just go out and play and to not play to, like, play to not lose rather than play yeah. to win, if you know what I mean. Um, it's, I'm just going to write that down. It's, it's like, like fa- failure freed you. It's like, yeah. it took away the fear of, because like, there is a lot of, like, it's so, like I've said at the start, it's so vulnerable what, what, what yeah, exactly. high performance athletes does. There is that, like, I'm just like, like, what if we, what if we lose? And it's, it's, uh, but when you've had the failure, if you can use it like you did and you go, oh, fuck it, if that's as bad as it is, and I'm still alive, I'm still here, I can actually go to play to, you know, be in it to win it now, like, not just go to not lose, but actually go, and win and, and, and win. really again it was you know we went up in 2014 we went down in 2015 and we went back up like 2016 17 with um you know olympic or world cup qualifiers and stuff like that so you know now we're, we're still on this upward trajectory and you know obviously the olympic qualifiers last november was massive massive for us because that was the one that was the one stage that we never get past in the last three cycles, like I went to the London qualifier, lost in the final, went to the Rio qualifier, lost on sudden death penalties. Now we're back to sudden death penalties against Canada. And you're going, not that again. Is. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just great that, and, and it is, it's, it, I, I really felt like it was our, our reward, like that we deserved it for everything that we'd gone through. And, and yeah, like it's definitely been the highest moment, I think, was qualifying for the Olympics. And I think like the other I think thing that you touched on there as well that's so important. And so sometimes we kind of struggle with in Ireland a little bit is like, you know, it's okay to say you want to be the best in the world at something. You yeah. totally accept that there's every chance you won't ever be, but it's okay <laughs> to say you want it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost like that piece of like, where the fuck will yeah? Like, you know what I mean? and when you've you know, you, you do the failure piece. And it looks like that. It's and I like I'm a big believer in the obstacles, the way, and all that kind of stuff. It really looks like the failure piece has set you guys up for something special, which is like, okay, like if you go to like you know when you get to the Olympics or whatever, you're actually going there ready to like you know and say it out like we're here, to, we're in it to win it. Like what is yeah, the, what is the fucking point? Yeah. What is the point in going and thinking about you know? But at the same time, you're so, you're you're so oh we we. Did. We're, we think, like, as a team, we know we are definitely capable of, of winning a medal. If we could win a medal in the World Cup, why would we not think we're capable of winning a medal in, in Tokyo? Of course we are. And it's, a, it's definitely, like, a, a, a realistic goal for us. And we've already written it down and talked about it and stuff like that. So, of course, like, we're not going there to take part, as mm. Conor McGregor says. Um, <laughs> not quite going to take over either, but we're going to, <laughs> we're going to go for a medal. And that's... Yeah that's it and I think the more we say it the more it's like like that it's like don't be afraid to say it and like kind of 
like finish and come full circle to the whole warrior piece it's like they always talk about dark that it's like 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 a, like the warrior has to make peace with death the warrior can't fear that if he fears death he's he's, he's beaten already he's dead, yeah he has to embrace it and be, be know that death is 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 only ever in the corner for you and it's like it sounds like you guys the the lows have allowed you guys to make peace with failure almost to the point where well i know it did for me I, like i obviously can't speak for everyone in the team but i i do know that it's for me and i think maybe it's the fact that i've experienced something like that before in my in my life with my dad and kind of going well oh, jesus like losing a parent what like realistically i'm probably not going to go through anything worse in my life like so i think that like I didn't really know it at the time of the Olympic qualifier fa uh, failure or whatever, but I think looking back at it now, I'd be like, yeah, I, I think that every time something bad happens or, you know, something that you don't really want to happen, it's always the biggest moment for learning and opportunity. And I think that I probably didn't realize it at the time, but now looking back, that's probably exactly the way I, I approached it. Um, well, Nikki, I cannot think of a, a better way to uh, to finish up than on that note. That was brilliant. I hope that Barry can live up to this uh, to the same. I'm sure oh, we get God, we, 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 we get him sipping. We we'll get him like I get him sipping a cocktail on the beach and came in. And he could That's it. He's through. he's into the um, what are they? It's espresso martinis. <laughs> okay, yeah, like them. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can get a lot of bar with an espresso martini. And a few tequila shots. And a few tequila shots, yeah. And then the real trade will come out. Nikki, thanks a million. Thanks no so bother. much. No um, problem. I hope that was alright. I really, really appreciate it.